going on you guys wanted to show you how i did a stereo delete diy on the c55 here we go so this is going in shortly what i wanted to show you guys beforehand the outside portion of the kit the actual stereo piece um, is from a manufacturer called metra and they produce dash kits for a bunch of different cars pretty much every car i could see um but the specific code for this uh, chassis, C-Class 0507, remember there's an update um, between, what is it, 02 or 01 when the C-Class started for W203. Um, so yeah, if you have the updated interior, it looks like this um, with these climate control panels and this. And there's a few others that share the same uh, stereo console, but um, that is the part number that I used it is 958721B as in boy. Um, you can find that online. I'll link it below as well. Super cheap. It was like 13 bucks. And then this middle portion is actually just a sheet of like 116 uh, thick ABS plastic that I used some double-sided tape to tape onto the back. Now, the grooves that you have to actually tape it onto the back are not very wide, so... I mean, it's stuck on there pretty good. Um, like I'm holding it just by that right now. Um, so don't have to worry about it, but yeah, there's some overhang in the back, but I don't care. It's not a big deal. Wanted to do something that was removable in case I do decide to put a doubled in in here at some point, um, but I'm fine with not having a stereo. Uh, the main reason is I wanna get rid of some of the weight and um, this thing. I mean, it's still working fine. But I peeled off, you guys know how these peel uh, quite frequently with this uh, stereo for Mercedes. For whatever reason, the plastic laminate bubbles up and when you try to peel it off, it just messes things up. So I had tried to polish this before and it is smooth right now, but I would have to you know, spend some time with kind of a special uh, plastic polish to really get it smooth. Like I, I could in some areas, you can see, but I just, I don't want to take the time to do it because I knew eventually I was going to be taking this thing out. It also has like, look what looks like mold from condensation over the years, just grimed onto there. And, you know, it's, it's old um, and I don't use it that often. When I do, I usually have it plugged in for the aux cable um, with my phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a Bluetooth speaker in the car that I'm going to use when I want to listen to music. But... For the most part, when I take this car out to drive now, it's uh, for fun or for commuting or whatever, like, which I'm not really commuting right now. So it's mostly just for fun. So I don't need a stereo in here. I can be happy with um, using a Bluetooth speaker and uh, I'll be stoked to have this in here. Something unique, different, not going to see it all the time in these uh, cars. So I think it looks pretty good. It'll clean it up and uh, save a little bit of weight because you know we are building this car for track usage and that counts every little bit counts so steps to get to this are you need to pull this panel up and then kind of slide it out um, this thing has little clips down here at the bottom and then after that you'll wiggle it out unplug the cigarette lighter uh, underneath here there's two t20 uh, torx heads screws and then you can wiggle this out it has clips up here but it'll come out pretty easily after you get the torques out then underneath this there's two more torques on the bottom here all right so step number one like i said lift up on that first panel it'll come out easy uh second thing there are two tabs on each side of this hard to see in this light but uh use a screwdriver kind of pry them up and then wedge this thing out all right, so here's the back side of that thing. Once you pull it out, that is a plug like that. It pulls um, that direction. Don't try to pull it up straight. It's actually pulled that direction. So there it is. That's the back of the cigarette lighter. So I was in there like this, just slip it out. And yeah, there you go. Okay, now underneath here is where I said the two torques are gonna be. So there's one on each side. And then after that, you can basically just pop this out. I actually already have the torques out of here because I was, uh, you know, planning on doing this so let me get that out of there one sec so wiggle that out the clips like i said up at the top there and then there's two plugs you got to slide this over this is just like um 
on the instrument clusters if you guys have ever seen that i'm not going to be able to do that with one hand so i got to poke it down and then pull that over and then this other plug just a small plug pull it out so you don't actually have to remove this part you can if you want to but uh you would pull that plug this is one that slides over you have to press down on the tab slide that gray piece over it'll pop out and the other one is just pull out one i already have access like you guys can see to the t20s uh, right here so i'm just going to leave it where it is i don't really care I can hang there hang out while i'm doing the rest of this so now i'm going to pop this uh top panel off okay i almost forgot about one critical step on the w203s i haven't done this in a while to get access to the last t20 screws which i forgot were there i thought this was all clips um you need to pull over this little clip that's inside of here so right here all the videos it makes it really hard to see but see how there's two different prongs on the inside right there you have to get in there with something and pull that inner one over. So I'm using tweezers. Um, so pull this one out. And as soon as you do that, you'll be able to pull this up all the way like this one is. And back there is a T20 uh, screw. All right, so now both of them are up. You can see there's a T20 back there somewhere. I can't really see it on camera. There it is. And there's the other one. So this top piece was a kind of a pain in the butt to get out. I luckily have some uh, tools that I use to rebuild my iMac. They're like Apple specific tools and they have a T20 with it. So I was able to get to the bottom T20s, which you can see right there, that's where they are. Somebody's obviously been in here before because that part was uh, definitely all broken up. The other one, so I don't know how well that side screw will stay in and i don't even know if i'll put the screws back in there to be honest because this thing stays in there pretty good um, it has clips up top and it had the screws at the bottom i don't even think it's going to need either one of them to be honest um, it's wedged in there pretty good so i'll see once i put it back in if i need to tighten up those screws or not so these little clips here on the inner portion see how there is a two tabs on each one there's a big tab and a small tab um, to get it to for these to roll all the way up for access to those screws you got to pull the little tab towards the big one and to get the vents to go down all the way to get to the top locking tabs you have to pull this tab over to the big one so yeah a little bit tedious kind of annoying i forgot about those and uh, here are the t20s that hold this top portion on all right, we have officially extracted the stereo. That was kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. Um, this thing is heavy. <laughs> it's like probably close to eight pounds, nine pounds, maybe more, maybe 10, I don't know. Um, but for these back parts, it has this clips. This one attaches like that. You gotta spin this thing back and then pull it out. And then these two um, have these little tabs on the top. You pull them out. And it was painful because my fingers are cold. But uh, yeah. Now I'm going to basically just tuck this stuff back here. Find a good place for it. Let it live back there. I'll try to put it somewhere where it's not going to rattle around. Um, but yeah, that should be should be good for now. All right guys, so not done yet, but I just wanted to show you guys. The fitment is impressive actually. Like it, it squeezed in there perfectly. The only thing that is not working as well is the fitment for the clips. Um, these things are not clicking in, either the bottom one or the top one. So uh, what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of double-sided tape just so that I'm not getting a bunch of extra moving that I don't need. Um, these things uh, have the T20s down here below. Um, and uh, right now, they're missing. I gotta find them. I took them out before when I was doing the manual swap. And I'm not sure where those bottom ones are. I have the top two already in there. I'm gonna take them out though, and I'm gonna put some double-sided tape just to keep this attached to the top and bottom portion of this. But I'm pretty happy with how it looks uh, and how the fitment is. It looks pretty flush. Um, 
So I'm gonna go grab some double-sided tape, tick, tack those down, and then put the other two pieces back in. All right, it took me way longer than I should have, uh, just because I ran into a few issues with trying to get this fitment perfect as possible. Um, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. I have some double-sided tape right underneath here, and I think because it's cold in here, it's not really sticking. So hopefully once I uh, get the car with some heat in it, um, those will kind of melt down and keep it keep it in place a little more. But um, overall, everything else is in place, good, and uh, no stereo, no problem. I'm happy with it. You can see right there what I'm talking about. I might try to snag those pieces out of there, to be honest, because it's, it's kind of just causing more harm than good. You can't see it when you're just looking at it without the light, but um, yeah, you can tell how it is right now. Let's see, I don't know if the command gives any errors um, on the ignition, let's see. Doesn't look like it. Normally things will pop up. So that's good, don't have to worry about that at least. Um, but yeah, new look, not bad.